Happy Wednesday, everyone, and welcome to a very special Brain Scratch Searchlight update. This is a case, um, probably one of the most difficult cases that I've covered, and we're looking at a very difficult outcome with it as well. Uh, today, we're talking about the case of Noah Davis missing from Ringgold, Georgia. And here on the screen, you can see from the episode we did, we also interviewed Noah's brother, Joshua Wright. Uh, actually, Joshua came up to the table that Danielle and I were at back at CrimeCon 2018, if I remember correctly, trying to raise exposure for Noah's case, trying to make sure that people knew to, to look out for him. Uh, and we took a bit of an interesting approach with it. Uh, we had Danielle do kind of the traditional coverage, go through the media, look into all that. There was a lot of high drama, let's just say, in the online community around this case. And we wanted to try to address that in some way as well. So I kind of opened myself up to listening to some of the online chatter that was going on and then using that to put my interview together with his brother Joshua because there was a, there was a lot of critics out there, a lot of different theories as we're going to hear from today's update. Um, there was just stories all over the place. I've, I've never to this day seen a, another case where the social chatter was so crazy. I mean, I guess if maybe if you look at the Summer Wells case, maybe that's the the level we're finally seeing uh, hit with that one. But terrible update. Noah's remains have been found. They were actually found a little bit of time ago, and there was, seems like there was an impact from COVID as well. So let's go ahead and get to the articles and, and see what's happened here. Georgia man's remains found. This is over at WVLT.TV. Catoosa County Sheriff Gary Sisk said Noah Brandon Davis's remains were found in an undeveloped remote area in October 2019. Sisk said the remains and location did not provide any clues about how Davis of Ringgold died. That's one of the things that we're always concerned about um, when we hear about remains being discovered, especially this far after the disappearance. I mean, we're talking five years after uh, he disappeared, his remains were found. What state are they in at that point? How much material is there to, to be analyzed? Um, looks like not much. And then, of course, the location itself. Does that speak to anything about what might have happened to him? The only thing I understand on the location is, from what I'm hearing, it seems like it was a couple miles away from uh, where he was living at the time. Back to a quote from the sheriff. I thank our investigators and dozens of law enforcement officers with partnering agencies for their tireless efforts to bring some closure to this challenging case, Sisk said. Together, we have pursued countless leads, conducted interviews with 41 people, searched thousands of acres in northwest Georgia and southeast Tennessee, and spent more than 100,000 hours working this investigation day and night. Investigators said those interviews that they conducted revealed conflicting stories that ended up being proven false or couldn't be verified. Um, pretty similar experience that I was having as I was trying to dive into some of the social media static around this case and then running into in information where it was like, oh, well, we can discount that. Like we've literally got a piece of paper here that proves this person couldn't have been there. Um, obviously, if I was running into that, investigators were dealing with it 10 times worse. After Davis's remains were found, they were sent to the North Texas State University Anthropology Department for DNA analysis. Investigators received confirmation from NTSU on June 9th that the remains were Davis. Uh, Six, Sisk said the COVID-9 pandemic caused several delays in getting the confirmation. So confirmation COVID did impact it. Um, but even outside of that, we're only hearing about this last week and they got the confirmation on June 9th. Seems like it's just been a very measured response in terms of having this information come out. Uh, I'm kind of surprised that we didn't hear from Joshua Wright uh, about this development earlier on. I don't know if there was maybe some investigation that they were still able to conduct after they had found those remains that they wanted to kind of keep this tight lip for a few months. Um, I have a feeling there's some other consideration like that that might have been going on around this, but... 
One way or another, here we are, and, and we did find out. Noah Davis's half-brother says the family is relieved to know Noah's remains were found, but they still have no answers. And we're actually talking about a different brother here. Uh, Noah went missing right around that time where he was supposed to check into rehab, said Jason Stevens, Noah Davis's half-brother. Stevens said Noah had a rough life, but was ready to turn it around in 2014. His dad was paying for him to go to rehab, Noah never made it. And this is a situation that we've talked about on different cases previously before as well. Um, we see disappearances that happen around these plans to go into rehab, and we always wonder, are they taken off because they don't want to go into rehab? Or this other possibility where it seems like people want to go and have one last big party or one last big go around, and sometimes they push a little too hard or go a little too far with that. Is that what happened in this case? We really have no idea at, at this point. Uh, or is there something else that might be at play here? Uh, let's continue with the comments from Jason. Um, so he, his dad was paying for him to go to rehab. He was going to turn his life around. Quote, from there, things just go crazy as far as the details and discrepancies in the story, Stevens told us. What are the leads? Who done this? So, Yeah. There's just more questions, especially him being found just not far from where he lived, said Stevens. Stevens suspects foul play. But right now, investigators say the cause of death is not determined. My gut tells me that somebody close to him, very close, is responsible for it, he told us. Another thing that just kind of tickles through my brain that I'm wondering about with this case as well, if there is some possibility that this was an overdose situation, was he with a group of people and then they didn't want to get in trouble and there's some aspect of moving him, taking his body to a different location or, or something like that? Uh, from what I understand, in most states, there would probably be criminal charges around that as well. Um, or is it as bad as his half-brother here is saying? Does he think that someone literally um, – is, is there a possibility someone literally took his life? The Catoosa County Sheriff's Office says the cause of death is not determined right now. They're still investigating. If you know anything, call them at 706-935-2424. And of course, I'll have that number in the description box down below as well. Now, what about Joshua? Um, we had him here on the channel. Uh, very tough interview, of course. We're talking about his missing brother. But outside of that, a little bit of social backlash that kind of happened around Joshua as well. We get some quotes from him here at WDEF. I miss my older brother, but now there's nothing I can do anymore, says Joshua Wright. You almost get used to dealing with something for over periods and periods of long it's been. It's been so hard, you almost go into autopilot to deal with it. I felt a huge weight coming off my shoulders, but it did break me, says Joshua. Noah's brother Joshua says he's not only heartbroken for himself, but his daughter, who remembers her uncle, and his mother who never stopped looking for Noah before she passed. He loved being an uncle too. So we used to go swimming a lot. And that day is what we did. Me, him, and my daughter, Michaela, we went swimming. There's a little video clip, one or two of them. He would repeatedly hurt himself off the diving board just to make her laugh, continues Joshua. Of course, my heart goes out to all the family affected by this. And it's terrible to think that Noah's mother would pass, I believe she passed in 2016, without ever knowing uh, what happened to him. But as a matter of fact, we've got his other family members that still don't know what happened to him. They've got one question answered. I hope they could find some level of comfort in being able to bring Noah home, have a proper memorial, um, put him to rest properly. But as we can see from these articles, they are strapped with new questions now. And suspicions that are as old as this disappearance is. It really doesn't change a whole lot in terms of the considerations, all the noise, all the different stories. Is one of those true? I don't know. And is the investigation going to continue on that front? Um, if there's any other updates, I'll let you know about it. I, I don't know what they're going to do. They might leave this in kind of an undetermined state that necessarily wouldn't call for a criminal investigation. So I really don't know. I don't know how much work goes into it from this point forward, but I know that that family is going to have to do uh, the work of carrying this. And um, it just, it really, 
it's a really tough thing to think about that they their reality that they've been dealing with since 2014 despite the fact that he's been found most of that reality still stays in play those brothers still wondering if they should be searching for justice and in josh's case looking for it so anyway that's the update on it um please join me again on friday for a brand new case right here on the lord and arts channel